What is it that the students learn from the IB system? Can the Turkish students adapt easily to the IB system within time? Would it be correct to say that the IB system teaches students how to think? Merhaba, ben Tamer Gürsoy. Bir yeni yayınla daha karşınızdayım. Bugün yepyeni bir konu ve yepyeni bir konuk var her zaman olduğu gibi. Konu biliyorsunuz liselerimizde iki türlü eğitim sistemi veriliyor bazı okullarda. Bir Milli Eğitim Bakanlığı yani MEB sistemi, bir de IB sistemi, International Bakalorya sisteminde veriliyor dersler. Bu seçenek öğrencilere veriliyor. Öğrenci hangisini seçerse o sistemle eğitimine devam ediyor bazı liselerde. Şimdi bu IB sistemi nedir ve bu IB sisteminin farkı nedir? Bunları görüşmek üzere. Bugünkü konu Brian Johnson huzurunuzda. Hi Brian, how are you? I'm very well, thank you Tama. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. Well, well, thank you for joining me. I know that you taught at the Koch School for many years. You taught yeah. IB math, right? Yeah. Yeah. Correct. Obviously, I cannot ask you the difference between teaching in the under the MEP system and the IB system because you never taught the MEP system. But I do want to go ahead and ask you, what is the difference of IB touch, or the IB nuance, if you will, while teaching math? I would say, Tamer, that the biggest difference would be the pedagogy, really. In other words, how mathematics is delivered to the students. From my limited experience of maybe covering for absent colleagues teaching grade nine or grade 10 in the high school, it seems that we are, the teachers are the ones that do all the work and the students are the sponges that take in that information and then regurgitate that information back out again. Now that's a very limited and narrow-minded view of the mathematics that I've seen in MEB. But from my experience of 25 years teaching abroad, Uh, and 10 years teaching in England, the pedagogy for the IB is more student-centered. We're looking at a classroom where the teacher's role is more of a mentor role rather than a, an instructor role. And I think that is the main difference between the two. Are you trying to say that in under the IB system, the student is the manager, the student is the applier, the student is the person who is fully responsible for everything Uh, he needs to do. I think so. And I, I, I think using the word, you know, full and any, I mean, obviously my role would be more as a mentor. So I, I wouldn't expect a student to come to class and get on with something without prior knowledge, prior learning, and also input from me. So as a mathematics teacher, I would still be doing the examples. I will still be showing the theory behind that mathematics and why we're doing it. But then I would take a step back and allow the students, maybe in small groups or pairs or on their own, to work on problems by themselves. And so my role would be more, I'll take my pencil and my scrap paper, I will walk around the classroom, put, putting out fires, if you like. You know, Mr. Brian, I've got a problem here. So I would go to that particular group. What's your problem? What's happening? They would tell me and I would, my, my first response would be something. So what have you tried so far? What problem solving have you done so far? Tell me what you've done. Show me what you've done. And then as a group, they would be able to explain to me how far they've got in solving this problem and then why they've come to a brick wall. My job would then maybe to feed in another clue perhaps, or another couple of clues and then walk away again. And, and let them do the whole thing. Yeah. Build their confidence in their problem solving skills, not tell them what to do, just advise them on a few areas, a few directions that they could go in, explore that, I'll come back in five minutes, see how far you've got. So the approach really is not, I'm not the know-all in class. I don't know everything. I shouldn't be telling everything to the students and they should be discovering that and finding it out for themselves. Brian, in the very broad sense, what is it that the students learn from the IB system? 
I think they learn, uh, obviously they learn the theory of mathematics. They will be doing mathematical problem solving. I think the difference is we're not looking for shortcuts. And that's one of the key points that I seem to think from my limited, again, experience of the MEB, is they're taught how to use proofs and theories as quick as possible. You maybe use a shortcut to solve a problem, which they've seen before. Now, the IB will, uh, will give them the tools. And if you think about it as a toolbox, if you have a toolbox, if you have a problem to solve, you have to know which tool to use. And I think my role is to teach them which tool to use. And, but before that, to, to actually solve that problem. What is it about this problem that you need to solve? And now, what tools do you have for your disposal? Make a choice. I won't tell them what tool to use. I'm not going to say, for this problem, use the sign rule. I'm going to say, what is it about this problem? You've got a list of tools. You've got a certain experience. I've taught you all these things. Now apply your knowledge. Apply that thinking in a group situation. And between you, come up with a solution. And then, does that solution make sense? Thinking that high school students have so much to do and they have so much load. I mean, they have to attend classes starting at a very early time in the morning uh, until yeah. they, you know, until the afternoon. And then they come home and then they have homework. And then, well, mind you, we have to realize that they also have a social life and uh, all the social media and everything. Yeah. So can we say that the IB also teaches them how to organize their time and the load and how yeah. to manage that load. Yes, I think that is one of the biggest pluses for uh, this particular curriculum. My son uh, went through the IB system from uh, the age of well, three, if you like. He went through the whole PYP, MYP, and then the diploma. So the full gamut of what the IB offers. And when, as they get older, they, learn, they, they hone their skills. They, they hone their skills of presentation, they hone their skills of research, of sifting out what is relevant and what is not. And again, to do all that, they have to be time organized. They have to be able to look at their calendar and organize their mathematics within, and within their French and their English and their sciences, plus their social life. And so we're trying to encourage balance between work and play it is a tough course. Um, I saw my son go through that. It is a tough course. And especially if it's a second language student, it's even tougher. Yeah, they, so students need to be super organized. They need to balance their school life with their social life and their sporting life and their music life and so on. And I think what we try to encourage with, within the system it, is to try and maintain that balance. There is a lot of work. You will have to work hard. But I think if you approach something and do a little bit every day, don't wait until the next homework comes. Don't wait to the next deadline. If a teacher gives you work on Monday, try and finish it on Monday evening. If the, because on Tuesday, you know you're going to get more work. Yes, so, so things will pile up. Yeah. Yes, don't let things get on top of you. And I know with the schools that I've worked in and many of the students also had to do like a evening classes for their own country curriculum. So for example, some Korean students might do a full day of IB in school, go home seven o'clock till 10 o'clock, do Korean studies, something like that, for example. They're not getting to bed till two o'clock in the morning. And so it is tough. It's, it's a tough it is very tough. Yeah. Yes, it is tough. So I think students need to know that before they embark upon it. However, the rewards for doing it, they open so many doors around the world. And if you're a student is willing to leave their own country to study abroad, then the IB has got the reputation and the credibility to open up hundreds of doors in hundreds of countries in all these university and college you know, settings. Absolutely amazing. So the IB education is especially handy if the student is a US or Europe college bound student. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I think there's more and more, I mean, I say I've been doing this for 
probably 25 years. And in that 25 years, more and more tertiary education, universities, colleges, more of those are recognizing that the IB is a well-rounded, well-grounded and a course which will cover everything that they're needed before they start their university. What is the age range for IB studies, Brian? The IB is, uh, it depends where we are in the world, it's either grade 11 and grade 12, that's what it would be in Turkey, of course, uh, but then depending on the system, my last school, it was year 12 and year 13. But so, you know, but it's basically 17, 18 year old students, the last two years of okay. your high school. You have said that I mean, mainly the IB is a student-based program as opposed to an instructor-based program. Correct. You started off your conversation like that. How do you think the Turkish students adapt to this? Because as Turkish students, we all know that they, they like to be administered. You know, they like to be told what to do and directed into certain direction as to what it is that they need to do. So... Can the Turkish students adapt easily to the IB system within time? If you're saying Turkish students, I can't answer that. But if you say, can some of the Turkish students or many of the Turkish students? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So it is not a course for everyone. And I think that's what they have to, in their, in their grade 10 year, before they make their decision to, to choose the IB or not, that's when they need to do their research into what do they want themselves what is it they want to get out of the IB because they want to go to a particular university? What are their strengths? What are they good at? Choose courses which they enjoy. Can all students cope with the IB? I'd say no. I think, you know, some of it is to, they, they, they have to show independence. And if you are not that sort of student that can't do that, if you can't do that, if you have to be told what to do all the time, then the IB will be a tough course to do. But I've seen students here and in my, certainly here because they've done the MEB for grade nine and grade 10. They've arrived at, at my door, never having used a calculator before. That's the first thing. And never really being asked, tell me what you think. You know, what do you think the answer should be? How, how shall I approach this problem? And the first time I came here five years ago, that's what I did to my grade 11 class. I put a problem on the board and I said, right, five minutes in groups, uh, off you go. And that's all I said. And I sat down and yeah. they didn't do anything. Nobody moved. <laughs> Nobody moved an inch. They didn't do anything. And then one girl said, what do you want us to do? And I said, look at the question, look for the clues, and see if you can come up with a solution to it. And I know full well that they had the tools, the mathematical tools from grade 10 to do the job. And so some of the students really thoroughly enjoyed that as a process. And they relished the fact of, oh, they want me to have a go. And they would chat in their groups and there was little discussions going on. But others in the same class, and I only had something like 17 students in the class, but maybe five of them didn't do anything. They just waited and waited until the answer was given so that they could copy down the answer. And I think that was the saddest thing was they, they didn't have the confidence to have a go because they didn't want to fail. I think that was the biggest thing for me. Because, because from what I see, anything less than 95% is bad in the MEB. And so then when they come to uh, the IB, we're not expecting 95%. We're not expecting 99%. We don't, we want them to, I want them to attempt problem solving. And if they're successful, great. But if they fail, great. It's, it's not a problem making a mistake and it's not a problem getting it wrong. It tells me something about where they are. I then can get into their head and say, right, what's the problem here? I see what you've done wrong. Let's go back and solve it together that's the time when when the mentor comes in and helps rather than the teacher telling them what to do from what you have said would it be correct to say that the ib system teaches students how to think yes that's that's basically it. I, I, in a nutshell i would say yes and that starts if if uh, the ib uh, as i say starts at the age of four and they're already at that age they're being encouraged to think encouraged to share their thoughts give opinions and certainly in mathematics it's not that sort of course where we have those sort of discussions but certainly other uh, subject areas the teachers are encouraging alternative responses 
We want to have perhaps a black answer and a white answer. We want two op opposing, uh, opposing answers in the classroom rather than me, this is the right answer, this is right. the wrong answer. What we're saying is you have a valid argument and you have a valid argument. You both have valid arguments. Now, convince me which one is correct. Is there any compromise between two, you two? Can you meet in the middle? Which is basically what adults do in real life, you know? Yeah, we but you know what? I mean, this is such a good way of helping them build confidence, isn't it? Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Let, letting them think, finding their own answers, and within time, trusting their choices, trusting their decisions. That's really great, isn't it? It's super. No, I it's, think so. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I mean, yeah. It, for some students, it is really, really, really difficult. Not because they don't have the opinion, not because they don't have the knowledge, but because they may be shy. They may be a very quiet student who sat at the back of the classroom for years, taking down the work, knowing what's happening, but they don't want to contribute. And that's fine. That's a personality trait. But over time, as the mentor, what I would like to do is encourage that student to at least answer one question or offer one opinion. And then that's it. And then build upon that over time. So that at the, at the end, they, the shy students realize that they do have a right. At the end of the day, it wouldn't be wrong if we said the IB is a good tool for students to think to decide, to learn, and to apply. I believe, and, I believe, yes, all of the above. All of the above. Yeah, is, yeah. Is, and manage their lives at the end. Yeah. Because, and, I mean, yeah. But you also, we, we have to remember as well, in order to have an opinion of something, in order to su suggest something or suggest a solution, you have to back that up with knowledge and evidence. And so the IB is not just people discussing things. Obviously, in mathematics, I will teach them trigonometry. I will teach them calculus. But the difference is we will then apply that calculus perhaps to some real world sort of uh, scenario rather than just theoretical calculus from a textbook. We might be using it in, in relation to business studies or economics or something like that. And yeah. so knowledge is definitely a key. But knowledge with understanding is much more powerful. Because if you have knowledge and you understand why, you can then make an argument for one case or another. Mm -hmm. And that's, that is the philosophy of the Ivy, in my opinion. Brian, in our preliminary talk, you had told me this, math is a tool for other subjects to use, e.g. psychology and statistics and whatnot. Yeah. Can you open yeah. that up a little bit? Yes, I can. The, the IB now offers four courses at two different levels for mathematics. And so with the analysis and approaches course, that is for the students who enjoy mathematics, who enjoy problem solving, who love generalization and algebra and things like that. And so the, uh, the, that course is, is more, if you like, mathematical, if you like. Applications and interpretation course, however, is based for students who can see how mathematics applies to the real world. So you are using your mathematics and it's the same mathematics in each course, but it's how you apply that mathematics. Yeah, that's, the, that's the main thing, isn't it? That's the most yeah. important difference. Yeah. And nuance. Yeah. From, what, from my experience, mathematics in its own right is a theoretical subject. And mathematics has unsolved theorems that are still on the books that are just out there and nobody can solve them and people are working on them still when it's pure theoretical mathematics. However, the other side of that coin is mathematics is used to solve problems in the real world. Mathematics is a reaction to what's happening in the real world. So, for example, I'm talking to the, uh, the, the, the mathematical students here. If you're doing complex numbers and imaginary numbers, well, imaginary numbers are just something that you've made up, all right? And it just think theoretic, theoretical maths, it's fantastic. However, back when they were discovering mathematics with, uh, sorry, with um, magnetism with electricity, and they were doing practical experiments with electromagnetism, they found that some of the mathematical solutions ended up that they couldn't solve. So they needed 
imaginary numbers and complex numbers to solve it. So the theory was there before they actually needed to use it. Okay. Interesting. It's an interesting idea. You it know, is. did we discover it or was it put there by whichever God you believe in for us to find? And so what happens was complex numbers and imaginary numbers were a mathematical concept. But then it was then there, there was an actual real practical reason for having it. It's the same with uh, you know trigonometry. When people were traveling around the world in ships, they stuck to the coastline. They just went around the coastline because they had to see the coastline, otherwise you get totally lost. But once you start measuring stars and positions relative to a particular point, and you start using angles and geometry and trigonometry, you can you now have got navigation. Again, a mathematics being used in a practical. Uh, situation so as i say the two courses one is more algebra theoretical mathematics uh, application of that sort of theory whereas the other course is using probability statistics algebra to solve real world problems and in perhaps economics or psychology doing surveys in psychology gathering data analyzing data and so it's as a concept, mathematics in its own right is, if you like, the king of all subjects. But it also permeates into all other subjects and all other ways of life, whether you are building a chair out of wood and you need to know how to measure or you're sending a rocket to the moon. Mathematics is going to be involved somewhere. Well, Brian, thank you for all the information you have given us, actually, to all the uh, target audience that this program has. Uh, from all around Turkey and Turkey-speaking countries, in fact. And um, I'm sure that uh, many, many students who want to study abroad do not have the luxury of approaching people like you to ask questions and to get your help or support. So via this program, they will get the chance to listen to what it is that you have to say, what it is that you have to advise to them, Thank you for joining me today in this program. This has been really useful, uh, I'm sure, for many, many college-bound students. I hope, I, yeah, I hope in some way it does help, uh, even if they take one sentence from what I've said. Uh, that would be ideal. And thank you, Tamer, for, for the invitation. It's nice to be able to have a chat about the role of mathematics and also how the IB fits into the big scheme of things when you're 16 years old, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So it, yes. Is, it is a difficult course, but it's exceptionally rewarding in the end. I believe so. Yes. Thank you, Brian. Thank you very much, Tamar.